Welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. What is your full name? My first name is Lee and my final name is John, but just call me by my English name, Alex. Alex does a wonderful job introducing herself. She gives her first name and her family name, then tells the examiner that she would like to be called by her English nickname, Alex. This shows that she has prepared for the IELTS exam, and it's a band nine start. Okay, Alex. May I see your identification? Oh, sure. This is why I use for register the exam, just to have a look. Thanks. When Alex presents her passport, she lacks confidence. It's important that you are confident from beginning to end. Instead of saying, this is the one, she should say, this is the passport I had used to register. This would be a band eight before correction. Okay, here's your passport back. Thank, Thank you. you. The speaking has three parts. I will give you instructions for each. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. And I'm going to record this for marking purposes. Where do you live? Currently, I live in one bedroom apartment uh, in Pudong district of Shanghai on 10th floor. Answering the question of where Alex lives, she gives a detailed response, including the type of building that she lives in and the city location. However, she is missing some important articles, like I live in an apartment. I live in the district of. It's important to pay attention to those articles, a uh, and the, as these make speech sound natural. Without these, her speech is a band seven. What is close to your home? There is a salon, a supermarket, and also a gym. And within the walking distance, there are also some restaurants and also other amenities as well. Answering the question of what is near her home, Alex does a good job immediately listing the amenities that are close by. Again, there are some mistakes with articles and her pronunciation is slightly tricky. It takes a little bit of extra effort for the examiner to understand exactly what she's saying. Again, this would be about a band 7.5 answer. Let's talk about dogs and cats. Do you own a dog or a cat? Uh, no, not now, because uh, I mean, I don't have any plan for pets now, even though I like them very much. Getting into the part one questions about cats and dogs, Alex is a little bit too casual. She uses the word cuz instead of the word because. It's okay to use casual language in your speaking, but not at the beginning. At the start of your speaking interview, you should really focus on using the accurate formal form of the word, using because instead of cause. Which do you like more, dogs or cats? Well, it's very hard to tell because I do like them both. But if I get to choose, I prefer dogs because simply because they are very obedient and then they love their masters unconditionally. Alex does a good job answering the question of choosing a dog over a cat if she had to make this choice and then giving an explanation. She uses good vocabulary that dogs love unconditionally and that they're obedient. So her vocabulary mark or lexical resource is very high. However, she does have to pay attention to the casual use of the word cause, as well as some awkward word choice if I got to choose, instead of using the correct if I had to choose. Where do you see dogs usually and where do you see cats usually? I see dogs quite often because there is a park around my place and the people often walk their dogs there. So I should see a couple of times a day. As for cats, um, not that often. If I visit a friend or a family member with a cat, then I can see them. I should see maybe once a month. Alex answers the question of frequency, how often, very well. She says often and then explains a couple of times a day. Numbers like a couple of times a day gives clarity to words like often, sometimes, usually.
However, she again uses a slightly awkward phrase saying, I should see. I'm not sure if she's saying I should say or I should see. It's slightly confusing. This type of language lowers scores. Why do you think dogs like chasing cats? It's kind of a funny question because I think it's a bit of stereotype. I don't think all the dogs love to chase cats. I mean, because I'm not a rheologist, I suppose like a dog, they have the natural prey versus predator relationship with the cats. Then it's just they chase them for fun and excitement. Again, Alex shows good lexical resource answering this question using the word zoologist. However, it is slightly tricky to understand the exact word that she's using. She needs to focus more on her enunciation, slow her speech, and really pronounce the word zoologist. If you could train a dog to perform a trick, what would it be and why? Uh, given a chance, I would uh, train my future dog to balance a basketball on his nose because all of my friends were a big fan of basketball. Alex is confident in using grammar. She says, if I could, I would train my dog to balance a basketball on its nose. Once again, her answers and explanations are very good but she must pay more attention to enunciation so that she has a higher level of coherence and clarity. As is, her band score remains closer to a 7.5 or 8. Have you ever owned a dog or a cat? And if yes, can you tell me about it? Oh yeah, definitely. I remember when I was around five years old, uh, in my family we had a cat. Its name is Mulan and she was black and white and super cute. I love to stay with her and play with her often. And she was rather friendly. And I often tie a rubber mouse to the end of string and she just play with it and pounce upon it. But unfortunately, she just passed away when I was around nine years old. Another very good answer with explanation using visual language, like she would pounce upon the ball of string. However, there are some oddities in her word choice and in the use of pronouns. She refers to her cat as both its and her. If you are talking about an animal as a he or a she, make sure to continue to do so. Don't mix in the neutral pronoun its. That's the end of part one. Now we will continue with part two. For part two, here is some note paper, a card with some questions, and a pencil. Don't turn the card over just yet. Uh, you will have one minute to look at the questions on the card, think about your answer. Then you will have two minutes to speak. You can take notes in the one minute if you wish. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. Are you mm -hmm. ready to begin? Yeah. Okay, then go ahead, turn over the card, and your one minute preparation time begins now. Want to know your speaking section score and band level? Send us a recording of Speaking Part 2 to the email address in the video description and we will give you an estimate score for free. Join our live IELTS classes each week right here on YouTube. Get the chance to speak with me and improve your English communication. Subscribe to this channel and click that bell button to get notifications. Now, let's continue. Okay, Alex, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Like a few weeks ago, I got one interesting notion from my professor, Li Jie, and she was explaining the liquid crystal display in our engineering class. And she told us this kind of liquid crystal display is type of organic liquid crystal, and which can be mounted into a single subject. Um, and so it's like the advancement of this new technology is gonna revolutionize the display industry, like for TV and also for the phones. Currently, as we may know, the display has two substrates, which means the crystal is trapped between a piece of glass and a board. But however, if we can adapt this liquid crystal display, which means 
They only need one piece of board without the glass. So it's just like a transparent piece of paper with an electronic charge, which just means people just can fold it or it just they can put it on the wall like a poster. And also I think this idea is quite smart because it makes the display industry technology quite versatile and also just make the possible advancement far beyond what is possible today. But it has only one drawback. The currently, uh, those crystals have a very short lifespan, which means they can only work for a few weeks. So I want to make it more viable, and I want to develop it further to put the minimum operation time to reach to 100,000 hours. And also, I want to make it more durable. And, okay, uh, Alex, I'm going to stop you there. Right. Uh, your two minutes is up. Uh, and then I'll take back the note paper, the card and the pencil. Thank you. Alex does an outstanding job answering the question of a clever idea that she had learned in part two. She describes the origin of the idea, the reason for the idea, the improvements to the idea. It is clear and comprehensible. However, she makes some slight mistakes that are similar to that of part one. A couple of key words like substrate are poorly pronounced. It's important to take your time and really enunciate words, especially those that are important for the information to make sense. Don't rush. As well, make sure that you have a finish for your answer to part two. Here, Alex is interrupted because it seems that she's going to continue talking until the examiner does so. Therefore, have a concluding sentence like, so this liquid crystal display was a great idea that I had learned about recently in university. And then stop. The examiner will know that you have concluded and finished your response. It will sound more natural and get a higher band score. Let's take a look at the part three follow-up questions. And now we will continue with part three. For part three, I will ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. Uh, let's talk about effective learning. What are some steps to improve the efficiency of learning for school subjects? I think there are many steps to improve the effectiveness of picking up knowledge uh, in a school subject like visualizing the information or the knowledge you pick up from the class or just taking notes or uh, do the critical thinking. Alex paraphrases the first part three question excellent. She uses idiomatic language saying picking up knowledge. However, again, some of the grammar is slightly off and her pronunciation is affecting coherence. Therefore, this would be scored at about a band 7.5. Which of these is the most important to do and why? I find it's hard to tell because uh, all of them are very important to do. But if I'm gonna say, I think the critical thinking is the most important because uh, actually it's uh, information processing. Alex does a good job answering this follow-up question. However, she makes the same mistake with the conditional as in part one when she says that she would choose a dog over a cat. She says, if I'm going to say, instead of saying, if I had to say, or if I must say, if I'm going to say is a little bit strange and unnatural. It's important to fix these fossilized mistakes that happen again and again in diction so that you reach higher clarity and coherence with your audience. What teaching aids have been used by schools over the past couple of decades to improve students' learning? Oh. I think over the past 20 years, the classroom have been filled with computers, electronic projectors, and uh, softwares to help students to design, to do research, and also to present their work. And students just uh, try to use those uh, equipments or softwares to develop and uh, to present their work. Alex gives a good detailed response giving an answer and explanation and even an example to the question. However, she does make again some mistakes here with the plurals, like saying softwares instead of just saying software. 
What new teaching aids may students see in the future? It's hard to tell actually, but uh, as we can see currently during the COVID-19 outbreak, we are using more and more online classroom teaching. So I think gonna be the trend in the future. Notice how Alex stays calm and confident. She doesn't rush her part three answers. She takes a moment to think about them and then gives a popular kind of answer. Here, using the current pandemic situation to reflect on the types of technology that are becoming popular in teaching. Some people believe that focusing uh, on effective learning is more important than studying hard. Is this true? Yeah, definitely. I think I totally agree with this statement. Like a, a student who has a effective study plan, we will just invest less time than a student who just don't have any plan about it. This answer is a little bit short and has an awkward ending. As well, the grammar near the end is a bit confusing. Don't have any plan about it. Instead of the correct grammar, doesn't have a plan of what to do. Careful, make sure to answer completely, giving clear explanations. And if you're stuck, think of an example. Let's talk about successful ideas. What is required for ideas to become not only reality, but also successful? Oh, I mean, this question, let me think about the liquid crystal display I mentioned before. I think for those new innovation, it's not only enough for people just to create it, but also they need to know the good marketing knowledge is like the social good or a good sales pinch. If they have this, then the customers, also the investors can know their benefits. Alex uses two good strategies to show a band eight level answer here. She reflects on her part two answer of liquid crystal displays, making a strong connection and more coherence. As well, she uses a correlative conjunction. She says not only, but also emphasizing her argument and points. These correlative or paired conjunctions can be very useful in effective speech. Make sure to learn them. If this term is new for you, then definitely research correlative conjunctions. What can people do to achieve these steps? I think the most in, how to say, the innovators and researchers, they need to learn the basic knowledge about marketing and also communication. Then once when they have a great idea or product, then they can just move them to the next level. And also like me, uh, I'm also taking the basic marketing classes in my uni. This answer is somewhat unclear and would definitely get a lower score. It seems that Alex herself is slightly confused about what she's saying. That also leads to confusion for the examiner. Make sure that if you need some time to think, you ask for it. Say, that's an interesting question. Let me think about it for a moment. And until you have clarity, take a pause, visualize, think about popular answers and then give a clear response. Where is it common to observe successful ideas in society these days? Mm, I should say definitely in the tech industry, because we can say like every day there will be the new products or the uh, popular apps just add to the lineup of the greatest and latest products line. So. Mm, I think the tech industry just have the most success stories. As with the previous answer, here Alex is unsure of what she's saying. You must be confident. If you are unsure of what you're saying or feel confused, so too will the examiner, and that will lead to lower band scores. Here again, this individual response would be scored at about a band six. It is unclear, awkward, and there is unnatural language. Stay confident from start to finish. Can you elaborate and give examples? Yeah, there is like a new technology called uh, mirrorless 4K camera. Uh, it's coming up to the market now, uh, like the Canon R5 and also the latest version of Instagram. Alex gives a good example 
referencing the 4K mirrorless camera. However, some of her word choice as well as expressions are awkward, like when she says coming up on the market instead of saying coming on the market. Remember not to use idiomatic language or expressions when you're not 100% sure that they are accurate because inaccurate expressions and idiomatic language are extremely confusing. Instead, just use clear, everyday English. Okay, that is the end of part three. That concludes the speaking portion of the exam. You will have your mark in about two weeks' time uh, with the other sections, of course. Uh, please do remember to take your passport with you and have a great rest of your day, Alex. All right, thank you. Same to you. Thanks, bye. bye. Alex does a great job confidently saying farewell to the examiner. It ends her conversation and this leaves the examiner with a positive thought. Make sure that when you are done your exam and the examiner says goodbye, you reflect and say, thank you, goodbye, have a good day. This is the right way to finish. Don't just quietly stand up and walk away. Continue practicing these questions with perfect band nine answers in a karaoke style first person video. Click on the link in the video description or on the next video at the end of this lesson. For our complete video library with no advertising and organized to maximize your learning, make sure to visit and join our premium IELTS package at aehelp.com. Use the code CLEVER9 to get a 10% discount. Begin learning for success today. Subscribe to our channel, click over here, watch another video, click right up here, and click our IELTS Hero to join our premium package and get access to all of our videos, practice exams, and a fully interactive course.